It was the year 2075, and humanity had finally gotten its act together enough to send a crude mission to Europa, the icy moon of Jupiter. For years, scientists had speculated that alien life might exist beneath its frozen surface, but no one had been daft enough to go check. Until now. NASA's finest, consisting of Captain Bill Thunderpants Thompson, scientist Dr. Lana Flambe, and an inexplicably optimistic intern named Ted, were about to become the first humans to step foot, well, more like skid gracelessly, on Europa. As they descended in their trusty spacecraft, the Flaming Penguin, Ted, peering through the viewport with an enthusiasm that verged on naive lunacy, exclaimed, This is it! We're going to discover alien life! I knew it! Dr. Flambe, being the only one on board with a PhD and any sense of reality, rolled her eyes. Ted, even if we find something, it'll probably be a few frozen microbes. Try not to get too excited. But as they landed and began to survey Europa's surface, they stumbled upon something no one could have predicted a massive hidden cave that housed what appeared to be an underground alien civilization, and by appeared to be, I mean, was unquestionably, mind-bogglingly alien. What the? Captain Thompson muttered, staring at the towering structures made of what could only be described as glowing purple cheese. Aliens! Actual, live aliens! Ted screamed jumping up and down like a child who just found out Santa Claus was real and moonlighting as a superhero. But what really caught their attention were the aliens themselves, tall, elegant, and decidedly humanoid. They were also suspiciously attractive, like someone had merged an Olympic gymnastics team with fashion models and then added a touch of glitter for good measure. As the crew stared slack-jawed, one of the aliens, a statuesque female with shimmering skin and eyes that glowed faintly blue, approached. She introduced herself telepathically, because of course she did as Zolana, priestess of the ancients. Ted's eyes nearly popped out of his head. Priestess? That's cool! Are you guys, like, from Mars? Or Venus? Or... Dr. Flambe elbowed him hard enough to bruise. Ted, shut up! Zolana, fortunately, had the patience of a saint. We are not from Mars or Venus. Our kind predates your planets. In fact, we settled Europa long before Earth even had single-celled organisms. We came here after our original homeworld was obliterated by a supernova. Europa was towed here by our technology. Toad? Captain Thompson said, his skepticism palpable. Yes, Toad, Zolana said, with the faintest hint of exasperation. We hooked Europa up to a cosmic hitch and dragged it into Jupiter's orbit. There was a pause. I don't even... Thompson began. But Dr. Flambe interrupted him. Wait, you're saying you're the original life forms of this solar system, and you towed a whole moon across the galaxy. Zolana nodded serenely. Yes, but that was millennia ago. We have since devoted ourselves to maintaining balance and harmony. She hesitated, and a faint blush appeared on her glittering cheeks. And well, now we're in a bit of a, a predicament. A predicament? Dr. Flambe asked cautiously. Yes, Zolana admitted. You see, our species has a very specific breeding cycle. It happens every 5,000 years, and unfortunately, most of our males, well, they didn't survive the last ice quake. Captain Thompson raised an eyebrow. So you're telling me? Zorlana shifted uncomfortably. In short, we require, a uh, assistance. Assistance? Ted asked his eyes still sparkling with excitement. What kind of assistance? We need your men, Zolana said, her face now a brilliant shade of pink, to help repopulate our species. 
There was a long, awkward silence. Captain Thompson blinked. Dr. Flambe blinked. Ted, naturally, didn't blink. He was too busy trying to process what was happening. Uh, what now? Thompson said, his voice cracking slightly. It's a great honor, Zolana said, as if that would somehow make things better. We are a noble race, with ancient traditions. Your participation would ensure the survival of a species older than your son. Ted, now completely losing it, whispered to Captain Thompson, Does this mean we're space dads? Dr. Flambe slapped her forehead. You've got to be kidding me. Zorlanya, sensing their hesitation, smiled diplomatically. Of course, we would not ask for such assistance without offering something in return. Like what? Thompson asked, clearly trying to regain some semblance of composure. Advanced technology, of course, Zorlana said. We can cure diseases, eliminate poverty, even fix your climate. In return, well, you know. Before Thompson could respond, Dr. Flambe interjected. So let me get this straight. You're saying that we're not the originators of life in the universe, and you're offering us unfathomable alien technology. But only if our men agree to, uh, help during your breeding cycle? Zorlana nodded, looking as graceful as ever. Yes. Well, the female can join in, if she likes. Could make it even more interesting. Ted raised his hand. Captain, I volunteer as tribute. No one's volunteering yet, Ted, Thompson growled, rubbing his temples. We need to think this through. As the crew stood in silence, contemplating the strangest negotiation in the history of human-alien relations, Zorlana added, And please consider this carefully. The breeding cycle begins in two hours. The room went quiet again. Two hours? Thompson muttered, eyes widening. Ted, always the optimist, looked at Dr. Flambe. I mean, it's kind of a win-win situation, right? Dr. Flambe looked like she was seriously considering hitting him with a rock sample and not wanting any part of this circus. As the two hours ticked away, the crew realized they had a choice to make. Save the human race from all its problems in exchange for a one-time favor or not. In the end, Captain Thompson made the call. All right, Ted, you're up. Good luck, buddy. Make us proud. You will be a intergalactic dad. Ted's face lit up like a Christmas tree. This is the best day of my life. And so, as the flaming penguin took off from Europa with humanity's future hanging in the balance, Ted remained behind, ready to become the most important intern in the history of the galaxy. Or, as Dr. Flambe succinctly put it, we are never going to hear the end of this, are we? And of course, they didn't. As the flaming penguin floated serenely above the icy surface of Europa, Captain Thompson stared out the window in silence, regretting every decision he had made in the past forty-eight hours. Dr. Flambe sat beside him, looking equally perturbed. So, Thompson said, breaking the silence, we just left Ted down there with a bunch of breeding aliens. Are we bad people? Dr. Flambe shrugged. Morally questionable, maybe, but he did volunteer. Thompson groaned. I feel like there's something deeply wrong about all of this. Don't overthink it, Captain. Ted's enthusiasm to become the galaxy's first interstellar surrogate is probably the most Ted thing Ted's ever done, she said. Besides, in about nine months, we're going to have a very awkward phone call with NASA. Although. Some of the staff will be disappointed. It wasn't them in your shoes. Suddenly, their radio crackled to life. This is Ted, calling from Planet Sexy. I mean, Europa. Can you hear me, Flaming Penguin? Thompson slapped his forehead. Oh, God. He already named it. Copy, Ted. You're not on a planet, by the way, and please, please don't call it that again. 
Ted's voice buzzed in over the radio, crackling with static and excitement. Right, sorry, it's just... Things are going great down here. You wouldn't believe it. Zorlana's showing me around, and it turns out they've got this whole system worked out. They call it the rejuicening. Cool name, huh? Rejuicening? Thompson exclaimed. What? Are they squeezing oranges down there? No, no, it's like a ceremony. There are sacred waterfalls, glowing plants, and apparently I get to wear this fancy robe. It's very ceremonial. Thompson and Dr. Flambe exchanged a glance. And when does the, uh, ceremony take place, Ted? Flambe asked, suddenly curious about just how absurd this was going to get. Ted's voice hesitated for a moment. In about ten minutes, it's going to be broadcast to their entire civilization. Isn't that cool? Thompson almost spat out his coffee. Wait, what? Broadcast? Ted, you didn't agree to be on alien television, did you? Well, they said it was sort of a cultural thing, like their version of a royal wedding. They assured me it's a tasteful event. No worries. Tasteful, Thompson repeated, horrified. Ted, this isn't an episode of Bake Off. They're going to televise. And, Ted cut in, they said if I go through with it, they'll throw in a cure for aging. I could live forever. Dr. Flambe rubbed her temples. Great. So not only is Ted on an alien reality show, he's about to become the galaxy's least qualified immortal. Captain. Ted continued, completely oblivious to their distress. You wouldn't believe the spread down here. I mean, the food is amazing. They've got this dish that's like a mix between sushi, lasagna, and something that glows. I don't know what it is, but it's fantastic. Thompson sighed. Ted, I'm glad the cuisine's good, but you might want to focus on the, you know, other part of the arrangement. Oh, right, Ted sounded chipper as ever. Well, Zorlana says we've got about five more minutes before the ceremony. I'm a little nervous, but hey, no pressure, right? There was a long, painful silence. Ted, Thompson said slowly, this is literally all pressure. You are about to be responsible for repopulating an ancient alien race. That is, by definition, a high-pressure situation. Ted chuckled, the sound of someone blissfully unaware of the gravity of the situation. Yeah, but it's not like I'll have to do all the work myself, right? There's, like, science and stuff involved. Probably, right? Dr. Flambe stared blankly at the control panel, muttering under her breath, I can't believe I'm part of this conversation. Thompson was about to respond when the radio crackled again. This time... It wasn't Ted. Greetings, asterisk, flaming penguin asterisk. This is Zolana. Oh, great, Thompson muttered, sitting up straighter. Uh, Zolana, hi. How's everything going down there? Everything is proceeding as planned. The rejuicening will commence shortly. Thompson cringed. Yeah, so, about that, uh, Ted mentioned something about it being broadcast. Yes, Zorlana replied smoothly. It is a sacred and honorable ritual. All of Europa will witness it. All of... Okay, just to clarify, when you say all of Europa, are we talking like ten people? A hundred? Zorlana hesitated. Approximately 1.7 billion. Thompson's jaw dropped. Be billion? Yes, she said calmly. It is a celebrated event marking the union of species for the sake of cosmic harmony. Thompson could feel his heart rate climbing. Uh, Zolana, I don't know how things work on Europa, but I don't think Ted fully understands what he signed up for. Zolana's voice remained serene. He will do fine. His DNA matches our needs. The rejuicening will be swift and efficient. Swift? 
Dr. Flambe interjected. How swift are we talking here? Approximately two minutes. Two minutes? Thompson and Flambe shouted in unison. Yes, Zolana confirmed. And afterward, he will be gifted with eternal youth, as well as a commemorative robe. Ted's voice cut back in. Hey, I get a robe. This just keeps getting better. Thompson pinched the bridge of his nose, trying desperately to remain calm. Zorlana, just one more question. Ted is aware of everything that's about to happen, right? Oh, yes, she said confidently. He has been thoroughly briefed. It is a simple, painless process. We simply place him in the rejuicening chamber, initiate the quantum resonance pulse, and within two minutes the necessary genetic material will be extracted and distributed. There was a pause. Wait, Ted's voice piped up. So I don't actually have to, you know. Correct, Zolana said, sounding almost amused. It is a purely technological process. There is no need for physical, um, exertion. Woo! Ted exclaimed. That's a relief. I thought this was going to be really awkward. Dr. Flambe shook her head, half laughing. Only Ted could sign up to repopulate an alien species and still not fully understand the job description. Zolana continued. Afterward, Ted will be honored with a statue in the Hall of Heroes. His likeness will stand beside our greatest figures. Aw, oh, shucks, Ted said modestly. A statue, that's nice. Thompson, thoroughly exhausted by the absurdity of it all, finally relaxed a little. Well, Ted, sounds like you got everything under control. Yeah, I think I've got this, Ted said cheerfully. It's basically like donating blood, but, you know, with space magic. As the flaming penguin hovered in Europa's orbit, Captain Thompson and Dr. Flambe couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. Guess Ted's going to be a legend after all, Thompson muttered. Flambe grinned. I just hope NASA's ready for the press conference. There is going to be a lot more volunteers. <laughs>